We got six o'clock, so we'll call the meeting to order of the All Good City Council meeting for Tuesday, June the 12th. And uh, we'll start with a roll call. Honorable Mayor Fouch. Present. Honorable Vice Mayor Norris. Here. Honorable Councilwoman Hawkins. Present. Honorable Councilman Adams. Here. Honorable Councilman Dyer. Present. Thank now you. I'll ask Chief Elder to lead us of the invocation and pledge of allegiance. <laughs> Oh, Lord, as we gather here tonight to conduct our city business, we ask for your guidance and direction. Lord, we ask you to keep our employees safe and our town safe. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Uh, item number four, consider agenda in minutes, uh, consider approval of agenda as presented, and I would like to amend the agenda to uh, to consider filling that vacancy on the planning commission that we talked about. I'd like to add that item to the agenda, and uh, otherwise I'll consider a motion to approve the agenda. I make the motion. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Consider approval of the minutes of the council meeting held on May 8th, 2012. Motion. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Consider approval to suspend reading of all the resolutions and ordinances presented in this council meeting in their entirety. Uh, so again, housekeeping We've got copies of all the ordinances that we're going to vote on tonight. The, the big bulk of them uh, deal with rezoning, so we're just to suspend the reading so we don't have to read about 50 pages worth of ordinance. Uh, I'll consider that motion. I make a motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor of suspending the reading of the ordinances, say aye. 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 All, in, all opposed? Motion carries. Consider approval of ordinance 562-12 on the second and final reading to adopt revised verbiage for obtaining a burn permit. This ordinance will rescind any and all prior ordinances regarding a burn permit. Uh, Chief, I'd like to speak to that? <coughs> Bilbrey. Good to meet you. Chief Bilbrey. Uh, yes, what we did is we changed that to take into consideration uh, what the state was recommending. Uh, the state recommends whether to burn or whether not to burn uh, from the dates of October 15th to May 15th. And in their recommendation, it does not take into consideration any wind speeds whatsoever. Of course, if anybody's ever burned, wind speeds should be made uh, a factor in that, and that's given the city the option to do that, uh, along with it's written in the ordinance. Whenever we don't have the state's recommendation uh, from May 15th to October 15th, that gives uh, the city the chance to set those, and that's what that does. So this being the second reading, uh, we'll, we'll have a public hearing on that. Does anybody in the audience like to speak to the, to the ordinance that we've discussed in the last meeting as well? Anybody on the council any discussion? And I'll consider a motion. Motion. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor of approval of Ordinance 562-12 on second and final reading uh, to adopt a revised verbiage for obtaining a burn permit, say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Consider approval of Ordinance 563-12 on second and final reading to adopt the revised personnel rules and regulations uh, for the employee handbook. <coughs> this is basically bringing the employee handbook up to date, revising anything that may be old, outdated, uh, taking out any verbiage that's unnecessary and adding new current verbiage based on maybe sick or vacation, just different policies throughout the, the work environment. So we're just pretty much bringing it up to date and accurate. Okay. This being the second reading, we'll have a, a public hearing. Anybody from the audience like to speak to the revised Employee handbook. There being none, any of the council like to discuss? Then I'll entertain a motion. Michael, motion. Second. Motion and second to consider approval of 563 12 on second and final reading <coughs> to adopt the revised personnel rules and regulations uh, and employee handbook. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> 
Under new business, um, we've got to consider approval to appoint Keith Morrison to the BZA. And he would like to speak he, to that? He couldn't make it tonight. He, he couldn't said make he it. would accept. Okay. Yes. So you want to make the motion? I'll make a motion. We accept. A motion. Right. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And while we're here, let's consider approving of Brent Heron to fill the vacant spot on Planning Commission. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Consider approval of resolution 272-12, uh, the city of Augusta addressing its interest in a lane shown on the plat of NC Cooper subdivision. I guess that would be you. Council, there's, uh, there's been a uh, question arise by local property owners as to, uh, on the old plat for the NC Cooper subdivision, which dates to, I think, the 40s or 50, 50s, there is shown a lane or an alley if you look at the plat. Um, in my investigation and the investigation conducted by the former city attorney, uh, we find no evidence, we found no evidence that that lane is owned by the city that it was ever dedicated to the city's use, nor was it ever accepted by the city as a city, as city property. Um, we have been, the city's been named in a, in a suit that is involving the adjoining property owners to settle title of that property. And we discussed this at the work session last month. Um, there's, been, there's no evidence that the council or that the city of Allgood has an interest in that lane. Um, therefore, this resolution, by passing it, this council would just formally state that, that the, the city of Allgood has no interest in this alley. And that would uh, remove us from that litigation, and then the adjoining property owners would continue that and, and settle that ownership rights as to that that old lane shown on the old plat. Thank you, Brian. Need a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll second that. A motion second to consider approval of resolution 272-12 addressing interest in that lane on the plat of NC Cooper subdivision. Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yes, sir. My name is Sam Cooper, and I was instructed by legal counsel tonight to uh, come to this meeting. He was supposed to be here, but I see that he hasn't shown up. told we'd be here tonight by legal counsel, uh, but my attorney has not shown up. He is going to try to urge the city of Allgood to stay in this case as a defendant. Uh, I'm a defendant, and he is going to try to urge the council to stay in also. About a year and a half ago, I was told by the city of Allgood that they own that lane in question. So I thought I was home free as far as having access to Cooper Road out that easement. But now uh, I'm told that the city of Alga doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And the gentleman that uh, has the city of Alga and me as defendants in this case is uh, taking me now apparently to court over this. Would there be any way we might wait for my legal counsel to address the city council. What's the thoughts, guys? I mean, we, we, as, as I understand, and as it's been explained to me, we, this kind of been on the, on the burner here for a year or two anyway, as I guess as previous to that, is who owns this lane. And it, it looks as if it were platted on the original division. It was never taken to the city. It's never given to the city or recorded the city. If I'm misspeaking, go ahead and say so. Well, there's, there's a plat. If you look in the records of the Register of Deeds, there's a plat for the NC Cooper subdivision. And on that plat, there, there appears to be what I have called a, quote, lane or an alley of some type that is not included in the lots for that subdivision. Um, ordinarily, when subdivisions are developed in modern times, the public roads and alleys will be dedicated to the government entity. There's no evidence that that was ever done, that this lane or alley was ever dedicated to the city of Allgood, nor has Allgood accepted it. And to my knowledge, uh, in my inquiry, the city of Allgood has never maintained this little alley that runs between two, I believe, houses or duplexes off of Cooper Road. Um, 
So uh, my recommendation to the city was to pass a resolution uh, officially disclaiming any interest so that the other parties can move forward uh, and settle the dispute amongst their joining property owners. Um, I believe if I understand Mr. Cooper's request, and he's just that you're asking this uh, council to postpone a decision? Until my legal counsel okay. can you know, talk to you about this, I have no attorney, and that's why I had to get this one. He, uh, as I say, should have been here tonight, but he's not. Uh, I've talked to Mr. I believe it's Mr. Rader. Yes. I've talked to him uh, one time on the phone about this issue uh, a month or two ago, but there wasn't a mention. Are we under any time pressure to resolve? We're not any. No, there's no time pressure. The only issue is that all good is currently named as a defendant in the suit. Sure. Uh, of course, they're not suing for money. It's not a monetary liability. It's just to settle the ownership interest of this lane. So we're we're not under any kind of major time con constraint. No. I move we table the motion, take it under advisement. And, and he'll be here next month, so we can, okay. Uh, Thank I'll you. Mr. Mayor, I'll rescind my original motion then. We can just table the motion, okay. we don't have to rescind it. So it's it's still in the record. Okay. It's so just tabled. A motion to table it. Thank you. I did. I'll second. Second. All in favor, table on the motion. Say aye. 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 Motion is tabled, and it will go on the next month's agenda, Ms. Larson. Consider approval of 564-12 ordinance uh, on first reading to change zoning ordinance classification for approximately 2.52 acres on East Main Street, Swift Street, and Markwater from CA General Commercial District and R1 Low Density Residential to CB Central Business District. <coughs> and I believe this is the plat that we that we saw in plan. Charles. <coughs> I'll make a motion on that. You guys all seen that plat? Second. Motion and second. Uh, all in favor of the ordinance on first reading say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries on first reading. Consider approval of ordinance 562-12 on first reading to change the zoning ordinance classification for approximately 6.342 acres located on Cooper Road from R3 High Density Residential District to an RD Single Family and Duplex Residential District. And this is the new zone that we passed uh, last meeting. So. We've seen the planning. Planning, planning is recommended. Uh, I'll make a motion. Motion, and I'll second. And all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. That motion carries on first reading. Consider approval of uh, ordinance 566-12 on first reading. Change the zoning ordinance classification for approximately 1.097 acres, located on Dry Valley Road and Stover Road from R1 Low Density Residential to R3 High Density Residential District. And I think this was also recommended by by planning in the Correct. last month's meeting. Correct. Mr. Ward had done uh, quite a bit of research on it. and uh, I think everybody's familiar with where the property is. So, uh, I'll make a motion on that. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor of Ordinance 560? 6-12 on first ring, say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. Consider approval of ordinance 567-12 on first reading to adopt fiscal year 2012-2013 budget and appropriations setting our new tax rate. And uh, I would like to do, I, I guess most of you read the papers, so I'd uh, like to do a little presentation to show kind of where our money is coming from and what we're talking about here, what I'm talking about here. I may be standing out here on an island, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do our presentation. So what, when we came back through the budget year, and if we go back through some history, uh, two years before we took office, the city council reduced property tax rates by 10%. And then the following year reduced an additional 10%. The year, our first budget year, we held the tax rate flat. So we've been, we've been that far back. We've been reduced tax, reduced tax, and the whole flat. So there's been no property tax in this community for at least three years and probably sometime before that. But we hear about property tax increase, and it, 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 it brings a whole lot of anxiety, property tax increase, property tax increase. But I want to show you where the money in all good comes from. Total annual revenues 
for everything. That, of course, our budget that you're going to see tonight has got some fund balance transfer, transfer because we are paying out of our reserve balance. And if you'll think about it, out of savings, cash money for our city hall building. And that's, that's something that's essentially unheard of. We've created no more debt for this city, no more debt service for this city. We are spending money that the folks before us have been very good stewards of the money and, and kept and put back for a day such as this when we can have our own municipal building. Accepting that money of budget transfer, our total revenues for the, for the city, $2.544 million. Out of that $2.544 million, property tax makes up $346,905. So you can see that our property tax is about 10% of our revenues total. So when we talk about where do all these services come from, the majority of these services do not come from property tax. The majority of the services that we enjoy as citizens of all good come from other tax revenue sources. Now those other tax revenue sources are about a page long. There's about what, 30 different revenue sources. Yeah. There's sales and use tax, there's wholesale beer tax, there's uh, payment in lieu of taxes, there's, there's just a whole list of those taxes. but. That whole figure, that $2.197 million, comes from the other tax funding sources. How is your property tax figured? And, and you know, a lot of you know this, and, and I'm not, I don't mean to talk down, I just mean to kind of get the good background before I show the bulk of what I'm trying to say. But our value of our property is what the property, property assessor says our, our house is worth, or our, our lot's worth, or our building's worth, or our property's worth. And then we assess a rate and got a slide on it here, our residential is assessed at 25% of that value. For an example, if your home was valued at $100,000 by the tax assessor, and the accuracy of that value, uh, you know, we debate sometimes up and down, and if they, if they assess you too high, we've got the right to appeal. If they assess you too low, most of us don't say a thing. But the tax assessor's rate, when you see your little rate card, $100,000 house, we attest, assess you at 25% of that, so $25,000. Our commercial and industrials is assessed at $40,000. Farm assets, uh, farm and green belt are assessed at $25,000. So when we take that $25,000 and we divide it by 100, and that comes up with 250 hundreds. And then our tax rate is set on cents or dollars per $100 assessed value. So that $100,000 house, and I'll show you the bill here, gets taxed at right now, point, or 51.26, I think Vaughn says 23, 51.23 cents per $100 assessed value. If your home was $400, they assess it at 100, you'd pay 53 cents, 51, 52 cents. So that's the way this is, the way this comes up with. <coughs> I'm proposing an eight cents per $100 assessed value property tax increase. This is information I copied and pasted right off the comptroller's website. That's the reason the format's the way it is, but it looks better on their website. But in all good Tennessee, our appraised land value, $38,424,200. Improved property value of $154.5 million. Tangible personal property, $14.9 million. Intangible personal property, they've not done anything, but our total value appraised is $207,936,604 of value of what we, the citizens of All Good, as a whole, own, which is pretty impressive for a town our size. It seems like a big number. Uh, total parcels assessed is 1,800 parcels. Taxable parcels is 1,747. How come there are not all parcels? Uh, 57 of them are exempt. They're owned by churches, not for profits, government, uh, things that we don't collect taxes on. Local real property assessed, and here we've done this a commercial at 40%. There's 20.4, they're 40% of the commercial value. This is what the assessed number works off of, is 20,464,400. Industrial is 3.5 Residential, and this is the one that, that the most of us will be concerned about because we worry about folks paying their property taxes on their homes, which is a big deal. $32 million of assessed value. So remember, there's four times that that we have an actual determined value. We're assessed at $32 million. Home belt, 42000 Farm, 144000 Agriculture, at 622000 For a total assessed value, at $61 million. 
$720,987. And if we multiply that times one penny, everybody wants to know what's your penny worth in government, our one penny tax is worth $6,172.09. So that's how we come up with it. So if you needed to spend $6,100, you'd say, well, that takes a penny of tax to do it. Residential appraised at 25%, you saw this figure, 32,447,975, with 1,386 parcels, and that's 2011-2012 total property tax. The assessed value times the former or the current tax rate, 51.26, it's two, three, it'll be pennies different, is $166,328. What's that mean? $166,000 tax dollars that come from the residential property owner that goes to operate this government on a $3 million budget. There's a small amount coming from homeowners. Divide that by a number of parcels, that's $120.06 per parcel. And based on the mean of what we pay there, that's $120 per parcel, um, seems like a pretty good deal. So if we lived in the county two miles over and we didn't have the services that the city of Allgood offers us, we still pay the same county rate, we just wouldn't pay this $120, what would our expenses be? So we wouldn't have police service, we'd have a county fire that's farther away so our homeowner insurance would be, far, would be higher our homeowner insurance would be higher because we didn't have our police department. When it snows, we don't get our streets scraped. We don't get our streets, streets salted. We don't get our brush picked up. We don't get our leaves picked up. We don't get our trash picked up. So let's just talk about trash. Trash pickup for county is, last I heard, about $20 a month. $20 a month times 12 months, $240 a year. Oddly enough, exactly twice that. The benefits is you get in the city of Allgood for your tax money that you pay on your home. It's a pretty good deal. Eight cent increase, what's that do to you? Divide our number of parcels, that's, that's that figure's wrong. I'll have to do that math again. I think that's supposed to be 45, but anyway, it's $18.73 a year, a buck and a half a month per parcel. A dollar and a half a month is a soft drink at the store per month parcel. So when I'm talking about a property tax increase, I'm not talking about making it where you can't live in your house. All I'm saying is we've got some things we need to do and some things I'd like to earmark this eight cents for. And I will go ahead and go on record to say that Chief Elder and the crew balanced the budget last year with no tax increase spent less money in operation costs than we spent the month the year before and have again presented us with a balanced budget with no tax increase. So I'm standing here today and telling you I got two more years in this office and I can live out two more years without a property tax increase if we can. But I'll also tell you that the way this has been going, our infrastructure is crumbling around us. We've got sidewalks that have got holes in them, we've got sidewalks that have got humps on them, We've got sidewalks that are not ADA compliant. As a matter of fact, we only have two sidewalks. That's our new ones that are ADA compliant. We've got folks that cannot get on a sidewalk and go from one sidewalk to the next without getting off into the streets. And some of these are in powered wheelchairs, some are in regular wheelchairs, some of them are elderly walking. So, you know, I like to say that I could have a lot more money in my pocket in my house if I wouldn't put shoes on my kids' feet if I wouldn't feed my kids, if I wouldn't put them in soccer, if I didn't spend money for the things that we want to do, I'd have a lot more cash in my pocket. And it works the same way here. I just got back from a local government elected officials class, and interestingly enough, we talk about things like this, and, and they put up a survey on the board, and they asked folks to rank, because they were having the same discussion, and they asked folks to rank from top to bottom, city services, what do you think we can do without? Police, fire, public works, blah, blah, blah. There was about 14 items. Rank them. Which ones do you think we need to do without or decrease their services? Which ones we should maintain the same? Which ones we should increase? Funniest thing about that survey is within two points from top to bottom of the list, <laughs> they were unchanged. There was no change in the ranking. What that tells you, or what it tells me, and everybody can interpret the data the way they want to, 
is we all want the services that we have. We all enjoy the services that we have. We're all proud to be living here in all good. We don't want to change services. The other side of that is there's some cost to go with it. Now the criticism to this is this is a bad time. Y'all are building a big building up here and now you're raising taxes to pay for it. Which, as you've seen, the numbers couldn't be farther from the truth. Because if we take our $325,000 of taxes and we pick up your trash, which the budget for that is 200 and, you got that figure, 260 some? And we hire a couple of police officers, we've run through our $325,000. So it's not property tax money that allows us to enjoy these services, it's the other taxes that surround this. Well, Fouch, it's property tax money from somewhere. You had to save the money from somewhere, and it was property tax money in the past that helped us build this building. And the answer is no, it's never been property tax. It's always been sales tax. It's always been business and use tax. It's always been wholesale beer tax. It's always been something besides property tax. How does our property tax com compare with cities around us? Baxter is, I just talked to the mayor, what did he say, Chief, about 50? something. Uh, Monterey is 90 some cents for $100 assessed value. We're 51. I'm wanting to go up to almost 60. What about cities our size? We're great. We're in good shape. And, and I'm, I'm not sounding the alarm. And I'm not saying that we can't do this. I'm just saying that we need to reinvest a little bit. So here we go. What about a real tax? We'll talk about big numbers. Let's talk about a little tax. $100,000 house. I think we can all figure out where we fall in that range. But you got a $100,000 house. The tax assessor says, your house and lot's worth $100,000. What's that cost me? My value's at $100,000. We assess it at 25%, which gives us a $25,000 assessment. We divide that by 100, that's 250. At our old rate, our current rate, $128.15. So you can see that $100,000 house is about average, right? Because I told you divided by the number of properties, it's 120. Here, this $100,000 guy is paying $128.15 for all good city taxes. Taxes that he would not pay if he lived in the county. And the new rate that I'm proposing, $148.15. For a $100,000 house, that's a difference of $20 a year, a buck 67 a month. Again, if I just, if, if it's that tight and I skip one drink at the minute mark, one cup of coffee at the diner, this is what we're talking about. So, we all get real big and emotional about, about property taxes, and I'm saying this isn't emotional, this is just business, it's just figures on the paper. And here's your figures. So <coughs> we're spending our property tax money for some very essential services, and I think picking up trash is, is the bulk of it, and a couple of police officers. Everything else we get benefit of because we've got a strong retail base, because we've got a strong industrial base. So here's my proposal. Earmark the entire eight cent increase to sidewalks and streets. Here's my priority. Repair the existing sidewalks to reduce liability. I am not talking about building new sidewalks to grandeur fast built that. That's just, I, that's the farthest from the way I think in the world. But what I know is the sidewalks on Wall Street, you can't walk on them. There's a sidewalk on Second Street that's got a hole you can drop a kid in. We've got sidewalks covered up. We've got sidewalks all over this town that are that bad. And I'm asking for about $60,000 total. We have one lawsuit because our sidewalk, somebody falls on them because they're in disrepair. We went to $60,000. Retrofit the existing sidewalks to ADA compliance to improve the flow for walkers and handicapped. That may ought to be our first priority, but I want to make that priorities here. And if you've ever seen somebody in a power wheelchair have to get off a sidewalk and get out in the street because they can't get from one corner to the next. Uh, we all, you know, we all want to do better. And third, it's filling the gaps where the sidewalks don't meet with other sidewalks. So we got sidewalks that come from one place, you can't get up Main Street. We go to one place, then we cross the, the, the street in front of Mary Judd's, and then we go up the street, and then we got to cross again, and maybe we'll eventually get to Walmart. But I'd like to fill in some of those gaps. And, and do I think $60,000 will do all that? Probably not this year. But I'm comfortable earmarking this eight cent tax increase for perpetual keeping our sidewalks up to date. Perpetual 
keeping ourselves out of a liability lawsuit for disrepair, perpetual keeping ourselves out of an ADA problem because somebody can't get from one sidewalk to the other. We've not made those accommodations, so we have the ability to do it. Now, what are our alternatives? Politically, I've been advised by some folks who are very close to me that don't bring this up, it's a bad time. And, and my answer to that is, it's not a good time ever to bring up talking about increasing somebody's property tax. But as I quoted in the paper, bread goes up, milk goes up, gas goes up, electricity goes up, things go up, costs go up. What we count on a lot here is our sales tax growing up, going up and keeping up with that. And our sales tax is a little better than we estimated this past year. Good news is we're under budget again. Good news is we were conservative with our, our revenue estimates. Good news is we were liberal with our expense estimates. And once again, we have not spent all we've made. I think that represents core values of this community. It represents my core values, and it represents the core values of this council. This is not popular. Politically, what's best for me? Assuming I would like to run again for mayor in two years, politically best for me not to raise anybody's taxes while I'm here. And I can do that. But what I believe is in two years when I leave, our sidewalks will be in worse shape than they are today if we don't reinvest. So there's what I've got to say, and this is before this council, but uh, unless somebody from the council objects, I really would like to open up a microphone and hear from the citizens because, number one, thank you all for being here, and I wish this room was this full every time we showed up. I, I, you know, we come with five or six people, and, and we put a couple of words in about uh, a little property tax increase, and we fill up, and I know we've got another issue up before us too, but. You know, what I promise the citizen, this citizenry is that, that we're fair and we're honest and we're open and I promise you that we're not wasting our money and I've got the intestinal fortitude to make some tough decisions because I think it's best. I don't always expect you guys to agree with me, but what I would like to ask is to believe that I, I feel like this is the right thing to do. So if we can speak and, and let's talk emotionless, let's talk business, let's talk about the direction we want this city to head, and let's come up here month after month after month and have these discussions. Microphone's yours, guys. Plus the council objects. Thanks. But did you ever think about the revenue from rental property? That's a million dollars. A million dollar property tax. That's a lot of money. We're setting our budget right now. Now this depends on whether we have to raise rents on people. If the, if the taxes go up and like you said, everything's going up, milk, everything. Now we have to raise rent. So you need to consider that also. It's not just people and all good. Also, I don't understand how in the world when we get 2.75% tax off that Walmart up there and the people in Kubler are coming in that Walmart just like the people in Allgood are, why we can't balance a budget on that. That doesn't make any sense to me, that we can't build sidewalks. That, that, that's enough money for Allgood to live on. That's all I got to say. Anybody else? And since I'm the champion of this, and I'll, I'll take full ownership of this being in the form it is, and Chief Elders did his part, um, Ms. Larson and the department heads did their part, presented us a balanced budget within the sales tax, within the revenue that we had. And I believe that's not enough money to put back into our community. So I will, uh, I have asked them to put this ordinance forward with that eight cents increase and set our new rate at .5923 per $100 of assessed value and consider this ordinance on 567-12 on the first reading. And last night during the work session, I asked the council to consider this when I got home. And I said, go home, consider, talk to your folks, pray about this and vote your heart. And that's what I intend for this vote to happen every time we vote, is to pray about it and vote your heart. Mr. Mayor, may I say so? Yes. Will you take the mic, please? Thank you, sir. 
Well, we're, re we're recording it, Freddie, if you don't care. We're recording that, if you don't care. Oh, are you? Okay. I think I would be doing the taxpayers wrong if I came up here and didn't speak on their behalf. I've been in you all's shoes back in the 80s. I served two terms on the county court. Regardless which way you vote on a tax increase or anything you vote on, you're going to have people like it and you're going to have people that don't like it. I know sometimes you got to make progress. But seeing what we see through the trustee's office, and I'm sure the ladies that work in your office, people are really, really struggling. You know, and I, and I told the county court some time ago, down towards the end of the season, of tax season, people were calling, men, women, everybody crying, worried that their property was going to be sold. I look back at the last five or six years, and every year it keeps increasing the amount of unpaid property taxes that we have to turn over to clerk and master. I'm sure the same thing happens with you all. And the people, you know, I've lived around this area. I have never lived side of side the city limits, but I went to the school, I went to school here, uh, I taught school here, got a business here. And, you know, we pay 40% instead of that 25%. And that's the reason I came in, to, in front of the work session, because I think we as property tax payers, and we pay sales tax here, that we ought to have a right to vote. And, and I know it's a rough decision, but believe me, people are really struggling. And, and there's a lot of people here on fixed income, and that's what I was trying to get at a minute ago. Um, you know, I write checks every, every time the state sends a sales tax. We are blessed here. We Absolutely. are blessed. I heard something said about Monterey a while ago. We can't compare ourselves to Monterey. We can't compare ourselves to Baxter. Absolutely. Go to Walmart. Look how many, not just from Cool, but you look Jackson County, Overton County, all the surrounding places. People we don't realize how blessed we are. And, and, and I know one time it was discussed, well, that's just one time to Cheddar's for some people. Listen, there's a lot of people that can't go to Cheddar's. And I've got a business, and I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm in that office up there. And it's just like when they start raising my employees and other county employees insurance, and they've not had a raise in years, I complain because they don't bid it out. And you know what I tell them? I can pay my taxes. I'm blessed, truly blessed, because I've got the money, and I'm not bragging. But I don't think I would be morally doing the right thing and the Christian thing if I didn't come up and stand up for people that's hurting. And that's the way I was raised, is to try to help people. And if I didn't do this, I wouldn't be doing the right thing. And believe me, I don't want to be here and talking because I know you all have a tough position, but I just had to speak. Thank you. Well, Fred, thank you. And, and <clears throat> I assure you this isn't taken lightly. Um, I'm going to put the ordinance up. Let's, let's move for, uh, and I'll make the motion. I'd like to move that we approve ordinance 567-12 on first reading to adopt the fiscal year 2012-2013 budget and set the appropriations at uh, 59.23 cents per hundred dollars uh, I mean, assessed value. Is there a second? I'll second. The motion's been made and second. All in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. <coughs> Mayor Fouch? Aye, present. Uh, yes. Vice Mayor Norris? No. Honorable Adams? No. Honorable Nair? Yes. Honorable Hawkins? No. Okay, and the motion has failed. And we have the contingency to pass the budget as presented originally at our um, current rate of 0.5123 cents per $100 assessed value. And we'll reduce that capital outlay because all that money was put on the budget in capital outlay streets and sidewalks. In the amount of fifty-one thousand nine hundred and five. So that puts that figure back to three seven zero 
$370,000. Yes. At the bottom of that page. Yes. On the worksheet. And uh, unless, well, I'll consider that motion unless somebody's got an alternative. I'll make that motion. And a second. This is to pass the budget that's presented last night. I'll second. All in favor of last night's budget with the current tax rate, say aye. Take a roll call. Mayor Fouch? Yes. Vice Mayor Norris? No. Honorable Adams? No. Honorable Dyer? Yes. Honorable Hawkins? No. Well, so our budget has failed on first reading. Um, would we like to get the tax rate out of the way? I want someone to consider a motion to at least set the tax rate. I move we set the tax rate at its current. 51. 0.5123. 0.5123. 51 cents, 51.23 cents per hundred dollars sets value. Second. Second. So this is to keep our tax rate where it is. All in favor, take a roll call. Mayor Fouch? Yes. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Honorable Adams? Yes. Honorable Dyer? Yes. Honorable Hawkins? Yes. Okay. That's progress, guys. At least we've got a tax rate. So what I think I hear this council saying is do you want to go back to the drawing board on this budget? Yes, we do. Okay. And we'll work together as a work session and do a little more whittling. <coughs> Uh, and, you know, guys, thank you. I know everybody's working their hard here. And, and I, I sincerely mean that when I say that. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, <coughs> we have a city administrator's report, Chief Eldridge. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, updates on the projects. Uh, everybody's passed, I'm sure, have seen the work at City Hall. Uh, they're moving along quickly. It was a slow start, but uh, there has been progress made to be hanging steel next week and hopefully in a few months we can put this behind us. Uh, the red light at 111 in Quinton Lake is moving along good. That should be completed in another 30 days. Uh, phase one of the Dry Valley project, the drainage issues uh, should be starting up in July, uh, providing that this budget uh, passes wherever it goes. Uh, all the departments are uh, in the black at 99, at 91 percent of the expenditures exhausted. I want to commend all the department heads for their uh, oversight and watching their uh, monies and being good stewards of the city. I uh, give you my compliments of your hard work. Uh, we have been working on the 2012-13 budget, and uh, looks like we're going to, we have balanced it. Uh, looks like we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and, and do some more work. So that's, uh, that's the wishes of this council, and that's what we'll do, and we'll do our best. Uh, anything from the department heads? Ms. Vaughn, do you have anything you need to bring forward, council? I do not. Thank you. Uh, Chief Belbrick? Oh, uh, Mr. Jones? Mr. Lane. In closing, I'd like to remind everybody of the June 30th uh, second annual homecoming and barbecue. Uh, that will be June 30th, 9 to 3. Uh, we hope everyone will come out. Hopefully the weather will be fitting. And we hope all of you come out and enjoy yourself. Mayor Fouch, if no one has any questions, that concludes my report. Okay. Any members of the council would like to speak? Anything you want to talk about? And the delegations are citizens, so the mic's open. Anybody like to speak to the council? Ms. Ms. Fox, do uh, you have anything you'd like to bring up? <coughs> We'd like to know how much our check was, and does the Lions Club get it for the uh, cook shack? The cook shack belong, the building belonged to the Lions Club. I know it was on the city property. This was all before my time. <clears throat> the 
yes, we do have a check, and it has been deposited, and it's for $25,000. Now, the, the issue on what we go from here, that's the reason I asked uh, you to come last night, and we got some miscommunications. Yes, uh -huh. uh, you thought the meeting was here, and it was up there, and I apologize to you and the Lions Club for that miscommunication, but uh, uh, basically it's, I guess, the decision of this council uh, where we go from here and, and what you all would like for us to consider. So. David. <clears throat> My name is David Norris. Uh, I'm a citizen here in Allgood and been a member of the Allgood Lions Club for going on 40 years now. Former <clears throat> and former mayor and city councilman. But uh, as, as everybody knows, our cook shack was destroyed by an automobile that unfortunately ran into it. This was our primary fundraising activity, and uh, this is how we raised our funds to uh, help people here in Allgood. Our primary uh, objective is site conservation. We buy eyeglasses for children of families that can't afford them otherwise. Uh, we support leader dogs. Uh, and we have even placed one leader dog in the years that I've served in our Lions Club uh, for a blind person. And this is no cost to them. It's all totally funded by Lions Clubs International, of which we are a part. But uh, we want to get our building built back so that we can continue our fundraising. Right now our funds are drying up because we don't, don't have anything to raise our funds with. And, uh, there was some confusion as to who owned the building, from what I understand. And I don't think there's anything on paper, either by the Lions Club or by the city, uh, showing who actually owned the building. But I can testify to you, and I'll do this under oath if I have to, the Lions Club built this building. I helped build it. I used some of my labor, and other members uh, also helped to build it. Uh, now, some of the members that uh, were primary in constructing the building are dead, unfortunately. Uh, we had three carpenters in our club at the time, and all three of them helped to build this building. And we have done repairs on the building from time to time, and we have paid for those repairs. And uh, we just want to get it resolved so that we can get our building put back up. And we also are going to be turning in to the insurance company uh, a claim for the contents, because we lost everything we had in it when it, when it went down, you know. and. Uh, we want to get it resolved so that we can get back in business and be of service to the community of Allgood as we have been for the past 40 years here. Uh, another thing that I want to mention also is that uh, we do a lot of good right here in this local community. These chairs you're sitting in here were all bought and paid for by the Lions Club and donated to this community center. And uh, some of these tables, we also bought those and donated them uh, to the community center also. But we just want to get it resolved and, and so we can get back in business. And we're not here to, to gripe or complain or anything like that. We just want to get it resolved so we, we can get our club back in, in uh, working condition here in the city of Allgood. I think that the Lions Club is the well, only civic organization in Allgood. And I can say that we, we probably do an awful lot of good for our community here. And it's at uh, the monies that we spend, we try to spend all of it locally on citizens who are in need here in our community. At Christmas time, we purchase Christmas baskets for families that uh, otherwise wouldn't have a very Merry Christmas. And we go around and deliver those personally. And I have done that, and, and it makes my Christmas go a lot better to do something f for somebody like that who is in need. But uh, we just want to, to get our our building back up and we've got one of our members who is looking into uh, getting somebody to maybe build it back you know and, and uh, we don't know what it's going to cost or how it, or what it's going to uh, entail you know to get it put back up but we would like to get it put back up so that we can get our club back in order well first off I'd like to say there I uh, hope you guys can come to a work session and let's help you get back to where you were and I think that was always our end goal is to get back where you were. The settlement came in about two weeks ago, is that, is that right? So there was some confusion. I think the day that it was run over, it's your building, it's our building, it's your building, it's our building. And bottom line, legally on city property, it's a city building. Now, what that means is the money has to go through city channels to get it back where it was. And, and, and as I understand, there's been some conflict on what the request was. You want the money 
and not build the building back. We want to build the building back. And uh, I think it's fabulous that you want to continue your mission to put the building back. And as far as testifying under oath, David, uh, I think whatever you say to me is good as any oath in the court. So uh, I'm with you. So let us help you and let's get this building back. So we are not in conflict and goals there. Can I add something there? What do we have, to, what this council and this board have to do to get them up and going? I don't know that yet, but. I can't answer that tonight. We're gonna to have to have some discussion on that. Uh, I was informed that the lines would be here tonight. I'm glad you're here. I was Thank interested you. taking some notes. I've been interested in what you had to say tonight, but frankly, uh, I've got to do some looking into it and have some discussion with the council on this issue. Yeah, I do know, I mean, I've, I've lived here all my life. So it'll be 62 years. And I know this Lion Club has been a big, important part of this town. Absolutely, no disagreement yeah. there. Yeah, and There's I'd like, no I'd like there. you know, to see and help get them, these folks back in business. Absolutely, and I yeah. promise nobody here is slow walking that process. I'm the membership so. committee, and I would like to invite all of you to join my club. <laughs> I think <it's> absolutely <laughs> even me, even me after tonight. <laughs> And thank you for all your service. Anybody else uh, would like to speak to the council? There being no no further business uh, for the council, I move adjournment. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.